Hello, and welcome back to the series that we are doing on some of the basics of etiquette. Now, in the last video that I did, which was on table settings and how to set a table and what all the different things on the table are, I had people message me and post comments saying what I really want to see is some kind of conversational or social etiquette, because that's going to be very useful. You may not be you know, attending some kind of a very fancy meal at an upscale restaurant and need to know what a shrimp fork is. But it is very common that you're going to be in conversation. You may want to know what's proper etiquette for just meeting somebody, what's proper etiquette for talking to somebody, how do I make sure that I'm not rude, that I'm polite, and that, you know, I have decent conversational skills. So we're going to talk about some of the basics then of, of the etiquette of conversation or of speech. So let's talk first about how to introduce yourself to somebody. So what is the process of meeting somebody new? It can be kind of awkward when you meet somebody new. I see awkward situations where people kind of want to say hi maybe and they're kind of looking at each other and nobody knows who who should talk first or how to approach each other, or whether to give a fist bump or a high five or a handshake or whatever. But uh, what, when you see somebody and you really want to meet somebody, just get up and introduce yourself, okay? Introduce yourself to them. You, you can take the initiative. Uh, you can say hello, offer your hand for a handshake. A handshake shake is certainly a more proper way to introduce yourself to somebody than you know giving a high five or, or a fist bump. If you are giving a handshake, people often do judge each other based on a handshake. You're talking about first impressions here. So somebody is going to, whether you like it or not, people judge each other based on first impressions. So you may think that's a terrible thing and we shouldn't do that. And probably we shouldn't, but we do as creatures. So let's recognize that humans do tend to judge each other based on appearances and based on first impressions. And oftentimes, very quickly, we decide whether we want to devote time to talking to that person or getting to know that person or not. That doesn't mean we can't ever change from that, but you want to make the best first impression that you can. So when you're giving somebody a handshake, there are a couple things that can be really awkward when you're giving somebody a handshake. First, you can kind of do the, the limp hand like this and just kind of let the other person shake your hand at, at, or like, you know, have them grab your fingers and flop your hand around. Don't don't do that. <laughs> so you need to have firmness in your handshake. So she, grab grab onto the hand firmly and shake it. Don't, you know, don't have the the kind of limp hand. It's not going to give a good impression of, of confidence. It's going to make it look like you're, you're weak and are lacking in self-confidence. Um, so grab firmly, but another problem you could have, something else that's very awkward, is if you shake somebody's hand too hard. Now, I remember a situation where I would shake a woman's hand after church every Sunday, and this was a much, much older woman. She was probably 90 years old. And eventually she said, you know, you hurt my hand every time you shake my hand after church. And I think I was being trying to be too aggressive in my handshakes. So uh, so you don't want to do that either. So you got to be be careful. And of course, if somebody is, is much older and is you know, has weaker hands, then maybe you should adjust your handshake depending on the person. That's probably a good idea. Uh, something else that can be really awkward is if you shake somebody's hand for too long. I remember visiting a a church where I met a very nice man uh, who, when he he met visitors, when he first met me, uh, and I saw him do this with other visitors later, he would shake your hand, but then just keep shaking your hand while he was having a conversation with you. And it was always very hard to focus on the conversation because you're just kind of thinking, when is he going to let go of my hand? And I certainly didn't mean anything bad by that at all. He was a very nice man. But uh, when you're shaking hands, you don't want to do it too long. So here's the basic rule of etiquette when you're shaking somebody's hand. Grab the hand firmly, but not too firmly, and do one, two shakes and move your hand out of the way. So about two shakes, you know, no, no violent shakes like this, <laughs> but just two firm handshakes. Uh, take your shake away, your hand away. Then you don't have to worry about it being like awkwardly long. So there's a basic rule that can just make things a little bit less awkward when you're giving a handshake. So then how do you introduce yourself to somebody? How do you begin small talk? Somebody, some people hate small talk. I hate small talk. I was terrible at small talk for a long time uh, until it, God called me into the pastoral ministry and I was going to be a pastor, which meant that I had to learn how to communicate with people <laughs> on a basic level. And I realized I, it was a lot of prayer and work to, to learn how to have that kind of small talk. Uh, I was, I'm naturally very shy and naturally don't want to have 
conversations that are like that. I want to have deep intellectual conversations with people. But if you start conversations that way, it, it's not going to go well for you socially. Uh, well, some people may enjoy it. You know, if you come up to me and I don't know you and you start asking me about philosophy or politics, I would be happy to talk about it. But that's not generally appropriate for, for most social situations and meeting some people that you don't know. Um, so if you don't know what to say in small talk, which can be super awkward, just start asking about the other person. This is what I find usually works best is people, what do people know the most about? And that is themselves. So you're going to make the other person feel at ease if you begin just asking questions. Ask questions about themselves, but don't ask personally invasive questions. And I have seen this as well, where somebody really wants to ask questions about the other person, but they start by asking some, some very uh, inappropriate questions. And what I mean by inappropriate is not not necessarily lewd questions, but just things that you don't share with somebody that you don't know well. So something important about etiquette is that you have to earn people's trust. You have to earn your way into knowing more intimate details about somebody's life. So don't just presume upon somebody. Don't just presume, you know, I know, I, I, I want to know what your salary is. This is not an appropriate question uh, to ask when you're first meeting somebody. In fact, it's never an appropriate question to ask. So don't ask anybody what their salary is. Uh, but you may have some kind of pre-prepared questions. You know, say you meet somebody, it, it depends on the event. So say you meet somebody at your friend Tom's house. Right? Go up to the person and say, oh, oh, hello, my name is, you know, introduce yourself. And they introduce themselves. Say, oh, how do you know Tom? And then listen to what they say about how they know Tom. Now, the way to follow up on that is to then listen to what their answer is and then ask a question dependent upon you know, what their answer is. So they say, oh, I met Tom, you know, at the whatever club. <laughs> uh, and you say, oh, are you in, how long have you been part of that club or whatever the subject of that club is? You know, so you hope that they'll give you points of conversation. And so you're, you're listening in your discussion for points of connection to be able to connect one point to the next, uh, to the next. It's good sometimes to just have pre-prepared questions too. It, you don't have to, not all conversation has to be totally spontaneous. You can find examples of questions that people have prepared. I mean, you can look this up online. I didn't prepare any here to, to bring up. But sometimes it's it's helpful to just have some questions in mind when you're going to a certain event. And that can differ depending on what the event is. You kind of know what the general theme or, or idea of the event is. But have some, some things in mind that you can bring up so you don't get nervous and just not know what to say uh, when, you, when you're communicating. So when someone gives you answers, listen and then follow up on their answers. Um, it, it could be really awkward if you just have a series of questions and then you talk to somebody and they answer your question, then you go through the next question, the next question. So don't plan out a script for yourself because that also can be very, very awkward and stilted, but have some general ideas of what you wanna talk about. Have maybe some basic introductory questions you wanna ask and then let the conversation flow from there. So do some active listening, which means listen to what the person is saying and think about how to respond in a way that connects with what the person is saying or ask further questions about what the person is, is saying. And most likely, if you start to ask questions, then they'll ask questions about you as well. And once you start talking about yourself, again, that's the thing you know the best. <laughs> so, so you should be able to communicate that, but don't dominate the conversation just talking about yourself. So what you don't want to do is introduce yourself to somebody, ask questions about them until they ask questions about you, and then say, okay, well, now here's what I really want to talk about. Let me just go on and on and on about myself. So make sure that that kind of back and forth is continuing uh, to, to, to happen throughout the conversation. So I've had conversations with people who are you know, very shy, don't really want to talk at all, and sometimes it takes a while of asking a lot of questions about them and showing interest in them that then they start to open up and, and feel comfortable. So it can take a while. They may not, don't be offended if they don't immediately ask back to you, well, how about you? Act like you wanna to talk to them for more reasons than just you want them to say something so you can say something, but you actually have genuine interest in them. Uh, just some basic things that you should do when you're meeting somebody, make sure that you have fresh breath, uh, you know, brush your teeth or use a mint. Put deodorant on, <laughs> don't smell bad. If you smell bad or you, 
you're too close to somebody and you breathe in their face and your breath smells bad, it's going to really have a very bad impression on that person. It's always a good idea to check your teeth to make sure you don't have food stuck in your teeth. For me, it's much it's a better idea to check my beard <laughs> because I have a tendency to drop things in and they get stuck in there when I don't see them. So especially if my wife isn't around because she'll always point it out to me before I embarrass myself, but check, you have to check in the mirror for that. Um, keep your fingernails clean. Again, that, that can be one of these things that just leaves a really bad impression that, you know, even if you were just, you know, out gardening and of course you're going to get, you know, dirt in your fingernails and that's not a bad thing, but if you don't clean them, you know, it, it gives the impression of, well, that person's dirty or that person doesn't shower, you know, even if it's obviously not the case. So clean your fingernails before uh, you meet somebody. You don't want to shake somebody's hand and have the first impression of you looking at your hand be that you're dirty. And, you know, just look in a mirror to make sure your hair is not sticking up. That always helps as well, especially if you have a cowlick on the back of your head like I do that it's constantly sticking up. <laughs> uh, okay, um, so another point of, of meeting somebody is do not act overly familiar with somebody that you just met. And this is what I said. You, you Familiarity is something that you have to earn. And it's a. I think this is a major problem in our society right now, is that people act like they know each other well when they don't, and this is something I've seen that's a generational gap as well. So I, I think a lot of uh, Gen Z, a lot of Zoomers, presume a lot more from internet relationships than do people in other generations. So you may you know know somebody online and feel like. You could kind of joke with them like you know a friend, but that's not always the case and it's not always appropriate. So there are things that are appropriate with one group of friends that are not appropriate with acquaintances. So there's a difference between how much you share with, with your spouse to how much you share with your close friends to how much you share with friends that aren't you know your closest friends to acquaintances to people you just met. Those are all different categories of people in their relationship to you, and there are different levels of formality with which you address those individuals. You have to earn a relationship with all of those groups before you can share certain things with them. So you have to earn personal intimacy with people instead of just assuming that they're going to tell you things or that you should be able to share very intimate things with somebody that you're not really that close with. You haven't earned that kind of intimacy with that person either. So when you're sharing with somebody, sharing information about yourself, when you're asked, don't share too much. Uh, don't emotionally dump on somebody that you just met. If you just meet somebody for the first time and you're having a really terrible time, it, it's it can be very awkward if you just kind of dump everything on them. Again, you haven't earned that with that individual. However, I will say, if somebody dumps emotionally on you, then if they're doing that, listen to them and give them support. Okay, so if somebody does that to you, don't correct them and say, we don't know each other. Be, be gracious to them and give them whatever support or help that you can in that situation. Here's one that I think should be clear, but it is certainly not clear in our society today. Men should not make sexual jokes or references around women. Just at all. And it doesn't matter what level of familiarity you have with a woman or you think you're close with a woman. It's not okay to make crude jokes or gestures to women at all. In fact, you just shouldn't have any sexual jokes and references in large public settings. It's one thing if you're a guy and you are around a group of close guy friends and you can joke around about certain things, but don't do it around women and don't do it in public spaces. You could even not do it in those spaces either, but <laughs> uh, but it's certainly not appropriate to do it in, in public spaces and, and around women. So men should behave differently around women than they behave around other men. They they should. And that's not being inauthentic. It's just recognizing that the, the dynamics that are at play there and recognizing what is socially appropriate in one circumstance is not socially appropriate in another circumstance. If you are uh, meeting a, a pastor, refer to to that man as a reverend. If you are meeting you know, a business superior, use titles, Mr., Mrs., Doctor. If the individual gives you permission to use their first name, then you can use their first name. But don't just presume you can speak to people by their first name. If you are making an introduction, uh, if you are, say, introducing a child to an adult, 
always introduce that adult as Mr., Mrs., Miss, Doctor, Professor, Teacher, whatever title that individual has. Uh, don't let your child just call people by their first names. And I know that this is a practice that's common. I think it is is inappropriate, and I think that it is important for children to learn about social structures and to learn respect. We we are we like to be in egalitarian kind of society, which in its fullness is very unhealthy. <laughs> you you have to acknowledge that you are the parent and they are a child. The child does not have the authority of the parent. The child, the student does not have the authority of the teacher. There are distinctions in social roles that are simply necessary to have society functioning in any proper functional way whatsoever. So we need to do that with, with children. And we can do that with children by showing them how to have respect for people that are older. So always reference somebody as Mr. or Mrs. or whatever other title they have. Now, if that individual tells the child to call them by their first name, this can be a dilemma for parents because the parents, you, first of all, you, you do have, you have two questions here. And one is the respect of that person, which is generally you want to respect what people want. But on the other hand, you are setting a standard for your child and you are teaching your child how to function in the world and how to treat others and look at others. So it's more than a question of how does that person want to be called, but also how, how are you expecting and teaching your child to function in the world? So my general practice is that if that person says, please call me by my first name, what I tell the child is, what I tell my kids is to refer to them as Miss or Mr. and then first name if they want to do that, because it still gives a title and a, a kind of respectability, but you have the familiarity of using the first name. Uh, and if they say not to do that, tell your kids to do it anyway. Um, <laughs> So uh, when you are introducing two people to, to one another, um, so if you're introducing a younger person to an older person, so it is always the younger person who is introduced to the older. So you would speak to, uh, to the adult and say, you know, adult X, I would like you to meet child Y. Uh, when it's an introduction between a man and a woman, um, the introduction is you introduce the man to the woman. And so you'd say to the woman, you know, Sarah, I would like you to meet Joe, whatever the names are. Uh, that is the case if it is a man and woman in the same age age range. So that's different if it's if it's an age uh, thing. And, it, and if it's a station, an issue of station or something like that, uh, somebody is say higher up in the company than somebody else, the same general principle would apply that you would say, you know, boss, I would like you to meet coworker. Um, it is helpful in an introduction if you're introducing two people to one another to give some detail or context about the individuals to one another to kind of start conversation and make things a little less awkward for them and, and help them to, to introduce themselves. Say, you know, hey, you know, Joe, this, you know, I, I, I want to, well, I guess you'd introduce Joe to Susie. So Susie, I want you to meet, uh, to meet Joe. And, um, you know, if you remember, he's the, he's the man who, you know, I went to go see this movie with, or we work together here, or whatever it might be. But give them some kind of little detail, because in doing that, you're bringing familiarity and you're already bringing up a topic of conversation for them. So you're helping them to begin to have some contextual clues about one another and also have some kind of connecting point to be able to uh, begin conversation with one another. So that's the end of uh, this talk in our etiquette series on how to give introductions, but this is the beginning of a number of talks that we're going to be doing on speech and other areas of etiquette. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe.